All right. What is up, tycoons? What's up, traders? TLT gap down today. Uh, bond market and bonds continue to fall. And there's a few reasons why. All right. So we're going to go over those. We're also going to do a technical analysis and go over the key levels and the structure that we've been tracking on TLT. So make sure to smash the like button, subscribe to the channel if you guys are new. So that way you don't miss out on these market update videos that I'm doing every single week. There's tons and tons of precious data inside of these videos and you're really going to appreciate them. Now, uh, I highlighted this in my last video, but I still want to emphasize this. The recent consumer price index numbers have been revised higher. So the market, specifically the stock market mostly, has been rallying a lot in hopes that the Fed is going to end up cutting rates here soon uh, or rather towards the end of the year because inflation is coming down and they're winning the battle against inflation. But what do you know? They came out and they revised the numbers and inflation is actually hotter than what it seemed. And rather than dipping, CPI was actually increasing. So, um, you know, that's why we're seeing a lot of pullbacks right now uh, among the new CPI report, as well as some of the PPI data and other inflation data that's coming out. Now, uh, if you take a look here, this is the one month percent change in CPI. And you can see this is what I was talking about, right? We were seeing this decline here. And then these numbers ended up getting revised higher. But we started seeing this decline. And look at what happened in January. Okay, we spiked back up. And that's not what we want to see, right? So what's happening is the market's getting spooked. And there's a few ways that you can help gauge market sentiment and really understand the price action besides just looking at the CPI. So, you know, when CPI is going to get come in hot, this is what's going to happen. You're going to see the treasury yields and you're going to see the U.S. dollar start to rise. So this is for the month of February, since the beginning of February. And we can see that the 10-year treasury yield is up 13% and the U.S. dollar is up 2.72%. I highlighted this in the last video. I said, you know, if inflation data comes out worse, right, what you're going to see is you're going to see these two things starting to go up. So it's very important to pay attention to the U.S. dollar and the treasury yields uh, because they directly affect uh, sp more specifically the bond market, but also the stock market, right? We can see that since February, the S&P 500 is basically flat up 0.05%. Um, and, you know, we were up higher, but we've started to pull back OK, as soon as the 10 year Treasury yield and the U.S. dollar got above the S&P 500, the stock market, which is our blue line here. Right. So we see the crossover here. And after that crossover, we've been in a slightly bearish trend when it comes to the stock market, as well as the bond market. OK, the bond market is down three point eight seven percent in the month of February at the time of this recording. Now, what are we seeing? Are the U.S. dollar and the 10-year Treasury yield going to be breaking out and continue this bullishness? So we have a bull flag here on Dixie, DXY, the U.S. dollar index, right? And we see that we're potentially trying to break out and we're above our major resistance level of 103,807. If the dollar continues to hold above 103,807 and continues to push up higher and potentially gets this bull flag breakout, that could be bad for stocks and bonds. Now, this is the 10-year treasury yield over here, and both of these are daily charts, okay? So each of these candlesticks represents a day, and we can see that TNX, the 10-year treasury yield, has been on a sharp incline here as of recent over the past week or two. We broke this bearish trend line that we had, and we actually came up and filled this gap right here in blue that I highlighted in my last video I did on TLT and the market. Now, uh, just to emphasize a little bit more, how you can understand these the prices of these bonds are working what we have here is tlt versus the fed funds rate so tlt is going to be in blue and the fed funds rate is going to be in red so notice in this period of essentially free money right here all right where the fed fund rate is at zero or extremely low it's no surprise that the bond market is going up in price, right? And we're seeing TLT on an incline. Now, what happens as soon as the Fed fund rate starts to increase, we see that TLT starts to go in a decline and starts to go lower. Now, it's not a coincidence that right after TLT starts to go up, as soon as the Fed fund rate drops, all right? And what's happened here, the Fed fund rate has skyrocketed and TLT as a result has started dropping significantly. The bond market is directly correlated 
to the Fed fund rate and the interest rate and treasury yields. So you have to keep that in mind. As rates go higher, the prices of bonds are going to go lower. That's just how the bond market works. The bond market is much larger than the stock market and is directly affected okay, by what uh, the Fed funds rate is, as well as the treasury yields and things like that. So it's important to keep an eye on a lot of these things, especially if you're trying to invest in bonds. Stocks are a little bit more speculative and can vary in degrees uh, from the effect on the Fed funds rate as well as treasury yields. So over here, um, <clears throat> this graph was made on the 14th on Valentine's Day. And what we're looking here, okay, is that the market's expectations for the Fed rate is indicating a further upward shift following the CPI data. So we have, you know, we have the 14th, we have the 13th, and then we have February 1st. All right. So you can see here that on February 1st, they were pricing in the Fed fund rate, you know, going just below 5% and then actually getting rate cuts starting in the summer. Right. And we're actually going to see the rates actually start to go down towards the end of summer 2023. And then the day before we got that CPI report, they had it, um, you know, trending a little bit higher and getting up above 5%. And after CPI, we can see that the market is now expecting the Fed fund rate to go much higher than 5%, closer to 5.5%. And ultimately, they're looking at rate cuts uh, at the very end of 2023 and potentially heading into 2024. So, you know, the expectations based off of this inflation data that we've been getting is that the Fed fund rate is going to have to stay higher for longer, just as Jerome Powell has been saying. A lot of people have been trying to fight the Fed and pricing in rate cuts early when, you know, that's not a, a great strategy to fight the Fed, you know, and try to time the Fed before they do something. Um, and now they're having to readjust and basically say, hey, you know what? Rates may actually have to stay higher for longer. And that's a lot of what's caused, you know, things like the TNX, the 10 year treasury yield to go up and things that are causing TLT to go down. Uh, now, technical buy, buy signals have been a bull trap for the past 14 months. All right, and that's what this chart is right here. We have the S&P 500. We have the VIX down here. But multiple times that we've broken above the 200-day moving average, we ended up having fails. And those were bull traps. And we ended up putting lower lows afterwards, right? Bull trap and then lower low, bull trap, lower low. Then we started getting some breadth thrust fails. And over here, we have potentially another bull trap where we have 200-day moving average breakouts. And there is a chance that we could come in and put new lows from our most recent lows, right? Not saying that we have to break the lows right here, right around the, you know, 3,500 region, uh, but, you know, the potential that we could make newer lows from our most recent lows or potentially even retest some of those lows. Um, now, this is a really great chart uh, that I've been, you know, making and showing in a lot of my TLT videos. And this is TLT versus the S&P 500 futures. We have TLT here in blue and the ES S&P 500 futures here in red. And each time there's been a divergence, TLT has been a leading indicator. So notice how we're going down on TLT, but the market is going up. All right. <clears throat> Stock market ends up following TLT and a large move downwards ends up happening. Same thing over here. Market's going up. TLT is going down. Market ends up following eventually and going down. So TLT has been a leading indicator for the past year, even to the upside, right? So right here, the stock market is making a low and a lower low. But over here, TLT is making higher lows. And what happens? The stock market follows. Over here, TLT is going down. ES is going up. And what do we see? ES ends up following TLT. And this is what we've been doing here recently. So if the pattern that's played out for the past year repeats itself, the stock market could be in for a big drop, just like that last chart that we showed. But this one is a little bit different. And this is my own indicator that I personally use, right? Now, it's no guarantees. We don't have to repeat the same patterns, and we're never going to repeat the same patterns 100% of the time. Eventually, this will break. But for the past year, this has been a really good indicator into some of the possible movements in the stock market. Now, the next one is going to be the stock market, SPX, over here in blue. All right, and then we have the Wyckoff method over here. So the Wyckoff method um, basically goes over like accumulation and uh, distribution. 
And um, it's a very good strategy and a lot of people like to use it. And if you take a look, this is the weekly chart for the S&P 500. And it looks eerily similar to the Wyckoff method, right? We got our initial spring and distribution. Look, spring distribution right there almost mirrors it perfectly. Then we got the breakdown and throwback. Same thing over here on the Wyckoff, right? Breakdown and throwback. Then you enter a phase of correction where you have a high here and then a new high and then a big leg down. And that looks like what we're trying to do right now, guys. We have the high, higher high, and potentially we could be heading into this next phase of redistribution, which would cause a lot of pain in the stock market. Now, it's no guarantees. OK, um, and, you know, I want the stock market to be bullish as anybody else. You know, I want to see stocks going up, but you have to keep some realistic expectations um, and try not to have confirmation bias or really bullish bias or bearish bias. You want to be open to all possibilities so that way you can prepare yourself for all scenarios and not be caught off guard by something, um, you know, that you really weren't expecting. So uh, I'm definitely watching this. I'm going to see how it develops. It's very interesting how well uh, it's lining up, you know, towards the Wyckoff method. And it'll be really interesting to see if this ends up playing out. That could be potentially disastrous for the stock market. Now, these are the TLT bearish indicators that we uh, had and that we were looking for. They struck again, right? And it seems like we're going to be getting the move that we've been looking for and we've been tracking for the past year on TLT. Now, what are those indicators, you may say? Well, we were looking here at the MACD and we had some question marks right here. We were wondering what the MACD was going to do. Was it going to cross down below and give us an exit signal or was it going to stay bullish and stay above this blue line here and continue to try to trend upwards? Well, we did get the crossover. And if you take a look, we got the MACD crossover right around here. And look what happened. We've continued to gap down multiple times since then. And TLT went from right around 109 all the way down to uh, lows of like uh, 101 here recently. Now, uh, besides the MACD, we also had bearish divergence on our relative strength index. So if you take a look here, we have a bearish channel in this area right here. And look at what the price of TLT was doing from this moment, right? If you look here at this moment, we're actually we're in an upwards channel and, and trending upwards, making higher lows, okay? But meanwhile, the relative strength index was in a bearish channel and trending downwards, putting in lower highs, right? We even made higher highs here um, and, you know, really kind of formed an ascending wedge pattern right here as well, right? Where we're zigzagging uh, in between this area and ultimately we broke this trend line, retested it, and then continue down lower. So uh, the TA has been working pretty well. Now, it's been very frustrating for a lot of people this time period here. The past two, three weeks, TLT was just consolidating, moving sideways, super choppy, go up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And it couldn't make its mind what it wanted to do at this 106.33 level. It couldn't stay above it for very long and it couldn't stay below it for very long without, you know, getting back up and above. But we did a great job of rejecting the 106 or the 61.8 percent retracement level at 109.72. And we ended up putting in a double top here. Right. So we have our top here and we have our top here. And we're going to see if this turns in to an M pattern, which will take us down to uh, the gap on TLT, the daily gap down from right over here from back in November of 2022. Remember, these gaps, they fill about 90% of the time. The big question is just when are they going to fill? So we do have gaps to the upside and we have gaps to the downside. And these are just going to help us understand where price action is being drawn towards. Currently, it looks like we're being drawn towards uh, our gap here right around 101. Um, so we're going to see if that gap ends up filling. Uh, but, you know, the indicators, our bearish indicators ended up working out very nicely uh, and gave us some clear signals. OK, we weren't sure if we were going to get a bull flag breakout as we did start to make a little bit of a bull flag structure here. As we consolidated, there was the chance we could have broke out and been drawn towards this gap up above. But ultimately, that 61.8 percent retracement level kept on rejecting us uh, and we ended up putting in a double top over here. We had the bearish divergence as well as a MACD exit signal and TLT has dropped uh, pretty significantly since that point. Now, this is the larger five wave structure that we're tracking. And I'll explain why I've been saying I have a price target of about 80 to 90. So um, the larger structure is going to be here in orange. It's a one, two, three, four, five wave down structure taking us to 8093 to about 8709 is going to be where uh, in a perfect world scenario, 
this uh, five wave structure would end up playing out. Now your wave one, your wave three, and your wave five are going to be five wave impulsive moves. And then your wave two and your wave four are going to be ABC corrections. And this structure has been working out very, very well. We've done a great job of rejecting the major retracement levels as well. So if you're not familiar with those, those are the 61.8, the 50%, and the 38.2. The reason we look at these is because nothing moves in a straight line down or a straight line up. We've been in a downtrend here, clearly. So what we're looking at is you have a downwards move, a retracement, a healthy retracement, and then a continuation of that trend, right? So this is, helps us spot trend continuation versus trend reversals. If we move down, retrace, consolidate, as we did over here, and then break through those retracement levels, that's when we could have uh, spotted a reversal. And we were very close to getting a reversal here recently. But rather, we've come down, retraced up, moved down, retraced up to the retracement levels, moved down, retraced up, and we tested our 61.8% retracement level twice. So it was really interesting. It looked like we potentially could have gotten a reversal and broke through those levels and tried to put in a new high above those highs of 120. Uh, that was definitely going to be a possibility if we ended up getting that bull flag breakout. But as I mentioned earlier, things do look like we could be setting up for an M pattern based off of that double top and some of the sell signals that we had on our RSI and MACD. Now, you can't be overly bearish, okay? This could change at any given moment, right? We could see uh, some bullish divergence start to form on the relative strength index. We could see the MACD curl back up above that blue line there and give us an entry signal. Um, so you have to stay open to all possibilities. But remember what I said about the structure, right? So wave one, three, and five are supposed to be five wave structures. We got that. We've been getting that one, two, three, four, five. And after that structure is done, you're expecting an ABC correction, which we got right after there that rejects at your major retracement levels. And then you start your next five wave structure to the downside and your target, right? So the wave C target is going to be the 1.0 to 786 uh, extension of your wave A to B. And so that's what the targets were here, 93.77 and 86.47. If you take a look, we broke below that 93.77 level and hit that target very nicely before we started our ABC correction wave. So... Your wave E is going to be the 786 to 1.0 extension of wave C to D right here, okay? So that's where I'm getting the targets here of 8709 to 8093. Um, those are going to be healthy targets for our next five wave structure to the downside, all right? So we were able to trade these moves very well, the C wave up, as well as our wave one down of the five wave structure. We were able to close some put positions here get in some call options, ride that good momentum. And then things just got super confusing, right? It was chopping around. It was trying to break our structure, but it looks like ultimately that was just some consolidation and we could potentially be in our wave three down, all right? Targeting uh, the 95 region potentially on TLT. Uh, and, you know, around there, we would expect some type of a bounce for a wave four. Uh, and then after that wave four completes, we would look to see if we come down to our wave five targets in between 80 and 87. Now, remember, this video isn't financial advice, okay? Um, these are free videos on YouTube. Uh, and what I'm doing is I'm just going over the structures and the patterns that I see and really trying to give you guys unbiased confirmation, right? I went over the bullish scenarios that we could have had when things were bullish and things can change and go back bullish, but the indicators have been performing very well, whether they're bearish or bullish. And we did get two bearish indicators here uh, as of recently. We also broke through our major support level of 102.94 right here. So if we come up, all right, uh, it's going to be really important to see if that acts, if that old support acts as new resistance, or if we break through that and 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 reclaim 102.94 as support. Now, there's some more data that we want to go over, uh, and this is some of the data that I highlighted in the last video. That's behind the scenes stuff. So uh, these are kind of the data that ended up pushing TLT down, and ultimately giving those technical indicators that we were looking at, right? These are more of fundamental ind indicators uh, based off of economic data. So we have PMI here in white, and then we have core sticky inflation in blue. Core sticky inflation is above the 30 years highs, guys. And this is what I was telling people is that, hey, inflation is a lot stickier than you think. Like we're seeing reports over the past few months, we saw inflation coming down, CPI coming down. We have PMI coming down. 
but we're actually seeing that the sticky inflation is still remaining very elevated. And this was driving some of the thesis that, hey, the Fed is going to actually have to keep rates higher than longer. And, you know, perhaps everyone calling the Fed bluff, uh, they may be getting things wrong. Or, you know, they could be right and we could end up seeing core sticky inflation really collapse. But as of now, uh, you know, inflation is still just a lot stickier than a lot of people are realizing. Um, this next one is going to be the core sticky inflation versus the Fed funds rate. And so you, we have the Fed funds rate in here and core sticky inflation in here in white. And you can see that the Fed, once the Fed fund rate actually gets above core sticky inflation, that's when you start to see a decline in it, right? Same thing over here, Fed fund rate above core sticky inflation, and then you start to see the drop. Same thing over here, Fed fund rate above core sticky inflation, and then we see a drop in the future. So, you know, the Fed funds rate is still below core sticky inflation, and, it, and you know, st core sticky inflation is still really, really elevated. So ultimately, if we want things to turn around for the good, we need to see that start to go down. Now, a lot of this stock market rallying has been due to short covering. So that's what this chart right here is going to emphasize and visualize for you guys. I've made a lot of videos in the past couple of weeks about the different stocks squeezing in the market and how it was short squeeze season. So as of here recently, okay, we uh, so short covering is up to the upside here and short selling is over here to the downside. All right. Um, and we can see that we most recently just hit a level that we have not seen back since 2016. OK, so this is 2016 right here, the amount of shorts covering. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of a lot of times it's because these shorts are getting squeezed out of their positions because the market's been rallying like crazy, guys. We had an amazing January in the stock market and the stock market uh, went up really big. And you know what happened? A lot of shorts got squeezed out and had to cover their positions. And we're seeing record high short covering here in February in the beginning of 2023. Um, you know, again, that's what we're looking at up here to the upside is short covering. And this is, uh, you know, just before 2016 right here is this line. So we're at levels that we haven't seen in 2016. And we're approaching some of the highs uh, back from 2013, 2014. Uh, so I just wanted to show that on there because, you know, I have been making a lot of short squeeze videos and, you know, the data is there. There's been tons of shorts that have been getting forced to cover uh, and potentially, you know, squeezed out of their positions, as people like to say. Now, the next chart we're looking at has been is the stock market versus financial conditions. And this is something that has just pretty much blown my mind, guys. OK, so if you take a look here, financial conditions have eased and dropped from the time of the Jackson Hole speech was, you know, summer of 2022. All right. This is where financial conditions were at the time. And we blew through that level, even though the Fed increased rates by 300 basis points since then. The stock market, OK, is here in blue in this light blue color right here. And you can see the stock market broke out as a result of these financial conditions easing. When and and these are the financial conditions up here. OK, so we have the adjusted national financial index uh, here in orange. We have the national financial condi uh, condition index here in blue. All right. And we can see that, you know, as these go up. All right. And financial conditions tighten, we see the stock market go down. All right. And then as these have been collapsing, the stock market has been rallying. So there's a direct correlation in financial conditions, uh, easing and tightening versus, um, you know, the stock market going up and down. And it's just really interesting to, to, to me to see how the Fed is out here saying that financial conditions are actually tighter and they've clearly you know, gone down and are looser than what what it was 300 basis points ago, which is just absolutely blew my mind. Now, this is the Fed funds rate versus financial conditions. And again, this is what I was trying to say, guys, is financial conditions were looser than even when the Fed first rate hike, right? So this is the Fed's first rate hike over here. And we can see that this is that point of the financial conditions index. And it's below that level, guys. It's just wild to me, okay, really to see this. And, you know, uh, uh, the title of my last TLT video was They Lied to You. And I was showing this data in there with uh, for the reason, right? Because Jerome Powell saying financial conditions have uh, significantly tightened. And, you know, we're actually seeing them looser than after his first rate hike. 
Um, and we're seeing, you know, the stock market continue to rally. Uh, they also, you know, said that CPI has been going down. We started the video showing off that, hey, CPI actually got revised and it's higher than what was previously stated. Um, so, you know, there's definitely been some shady stuff going on in the market. Um, now, over here, we're just kind of going over some news and some data. But Walmart is warning major package goods makers that it can no longer stomach their price hikes, pitching its own private label products to shoppers, to shoppers as less expensive alternatives to suppliers' name brand goods. Now, why am I doing this? Well, I'm doing this to show that, um, you know, these companies, all right, they're basically coming to a point where they can't really raise prices anymore. All right. They've been raising prices. Um, and, you know, you look at, at a company like Johnson & Johnson. And they have not been performing very well as of recently. And the reason being is that these companies are coming out and saying like, hey, we're losing our pricing power. If we continue to raise prices more and more, uh, we fear that we're going to suffer in demand and that we're going to lose demand for our product if we continue to raise prices. And so as a result, um, you know, these companies, as I mentioned, they're losing their pricing power and, you know, they're in fear of trying to, you know, hike prices even more because they fear that demand is not going to come through. So you have Johnson and Johnson saying that you have Walmart saying that here that, you know, basically consumers can't stomach any more of these price hikes. So what is Walmart doing? They're pitching their own private label stuff versus the name brands. Um, now this next chart over here, uh, this is a chart of the Goldman Sachs soft landing basket. Now this thing has been on a tear since the start of the year. All right, you can see this thing broke out and has been performing very, very well, uh, com especially compared to the S&P 500 index, uh, which that's what this chart is, is a comparison chart between the two. And, you know, this thing could be due for a big crash if this soft landing narrative is going to go away. Now, right now, that's been the thing that's been pumping, right? is the soft landing narrative has been really pumping or even no landing at all. And basically saying that, hey, um, you know, things are better than what we thought. And, you know, stocks are doing pretty good. Uh, the consumers seem strong. And, you know, that could be a false narrative that's been painting, uh, that's basically been painted by, you know, the media and, you know, the powers that be. So, um, you know, there definitely could be a soft landing. That's entirely possible. Uh, but I'm really just rather than trying to paint the narratives, just show you guys actual data. All of these charts have been real factual data that you can go up and look and the information is going to be the same. And then you can interpret that data however you want. I'm just here to try to present it for you guys in a nice, concise manner and all together. All right, now this is the CPI contribution to the year-over-year -year change. And so you have energy here in green. You have food in you know this orangish color. We have goods in red. And then we have services, okay? So as you can see, services has been ticking up and has been a large factor beside, uh, you know, behind the headline CPI. Now, uh, goods have started to decline, okay? We're also seeing food and energy start to decline as well. But services is really, really where we need to start to see the decline in inflation. So, um, you know, if you're wondering, you know, what basically the main factor is behind inflation right now, okay, is definitely services in the services uh, industry and sector. Um, now, Bonds, okay, bonds really could be the best trade of 2023. Remember, not financial advice, but when it comes to long-term opportunities, um, there's been very, very few times where the bond market and the stock market have collapsed like this. Um, and we're seeing a lot of inflows come into bond ETFs. They're having the best start to a year in flows, taking in $20 billion in January. High rates, low rates don't matter. They're taking cash and now they're this close to doubling their AUM since the black eye, some worry days of March, 2020, which is basically, you know, a lot of people thought that the bond market was basically broken in March, 2020, uh, you know, around COVID and that people really would lose a lot of interest, but rather we're seeing a lot of flows go into bond ETFs. Um, and, you know, that's, I've, I've been really interested in bond ETFs, you know. Um, I think that there are some really good opportunities there. 
and you know especially for the long term um but you know just because i have some long term bullish thesis on it it doesn't mean that i can't have you know maybe a shorter term bearish thesis on it right which is why we're tracking that five wave bearish structure we're going to see if that plays out and if that does play out then you know there is an opportunity uh to wait essentially before having to get into the bond etfs uh such as tlt or spxb uh whatever you know bond etfs you like um, but, you know, I definitely think that the bonds have a very high potential in the future um, and a really good opportunity with the Fed fund rate being so high and interest rates being so high. Eventually, the Fed is going to cut again. Uh, we don't know when, so you can't time the market. But the way that bonds work is prices go up of bonds when rates start to go down. And as rates go up, uh, the price of bonds go down. So we're still in a rate hiking environment which leads me to believe that there uh, potentially could be more pain in the bond market. But, you know, once we start cutting rates, uh, you know, bonds are going to be a really, really interesting opportunity. Uh, and, you know, definitely do some more research, see if that's something that, uh, you know, you guys would be interested in. And a lot of people sleep on the bond market. Don't sleep on the bond market. There's there's still good returns that you can make in the bond market. It just depends on, you know, what your risk profile is like and, you know, really what your strategy is like. So uh, that should wrap up today's video. I appreciate you guys watching it. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, smash the like button, subscribe to the channel, share it with a friend, something like that. I'm out.